Hey everybody, it's Al with CADCAMWizard.com and today we're going to take a look at version 36 and a couple of 2D features. Uh, the first one up is Extract Edges. Uh, you use this to convert surfaces or solids to wireframe, something I use quite often. In other systems it might be called Project Curves. Uh, the second one we're going to talk about is Section View. It allows you to see a cross section of the part but you can also generate wireframe with it and the third one here is just some 2d profiling uh, something every shop does every day all right let's uh, let's get into it so today we have just a pretty simple part here and uh, you know we imported in it it in as a solid and now we want to convert it to wireframe there's a number of reasons why you might want to convert it to wireframe. Uh, you know, editing the geometry, measurements, um, a variety of different reasons, but let's go ahead and, and start with that. So before we start creating wireframe, I recommend we create a new layer. Uh, the reason why I do this has to do with selection. If we create uh, the wireframe based off the surface or solid in its location and it might be more difficult to select so where do we find this we're gonna go over create 2d and we're gonna go to extract edges now there's a couple of options here but often I just start with the first one extract edges okay uh, from here we can pick a, a face that we want to get the wireframe for and then we can choose okay all right, so you can see we generated the wireframe for it. Uh, you might see a little bit of the blue right here. Uh, but again, it, it's in the same location of the solid. So let's do a control Z to undo that. We'll come over to the, the layer section here. I'm gonna just uh, right click, add new layer, we'll give it a name. The green checkbox makes it the active layer. And then we'll go up to extract edges right we can just click here extract edges we're gonna pick this face we'll choose OK and then cancel all right now we can use the eyeball to hide the solid layer and we can see we're left with the wireframe all right so uh, very useful feature uh, another option that you have in here let's just create another layer we'll call it two turn this one back on you know when you're when you're editing geometry uh, it, you know it, it's in a plane so we can create wireframe anywhere uh, but if we're gonna want to stretch it or edit it uh, we really want it to be in a, a standard uh, plane you know like the default XY plane which we can see over here right okay so if we were trying to get this edge down here if we extract edges uh, we could pick this one here on the inside, but if we click this one here uh, or this whole face, right, and we say OK, you'll notice that it will be in its Z position or where it was in Z. OK, so sometimes that's desirable. Uh, other times it's not. So let's do a control Z. Uh, if we want that geometry to be in the same plane as the other geometry, we're going to choose extract edges but then you'll notice there's this project to z plane so we can turn that on and then we can tell it a z value where we want it to go to so in this example we want it to go to zero uh, so we'll go ahead and bring up this face again all right we'll select that edge go ahead and choose okay and then cancel and then now you can see we're able to extract that wireframe at that z level all right, that's a little bit about Extract Edges. If you have any questions about Extract Edges, make sure to, to put it in the comments of this video. Uh, let's go ahead and do in Control z to undo. Bring the model back up. All right, so the next one I want to talk about is called Section View. Uh, we'll find that one right here. Okay, so we can turn on Section View. And what this allows you to do is to pull this plane up or down and be able to see through the model. Uh, as you get into more complex shapes, uh, sometimes it's very helpful to be able to, to see through the model at a section or a 
along a, a plane and this feature allows you to do that. Now you can choose from the standard uh, plane or you can choose one of the other ones and again using this arrow you can pull it along okay uh, or you can also enter in a distance all right we can go to a, a side view here be able to pull this out to be able to get a different uh, view of the model okay so a lot of times not so much for viewing even though the fact that you can view is is pretty cool a lot of times I'm using this just to get wireframe uh, another way to get wireframe so once you get your section view in the position you want you can click create wireframe we'll cancel you know and now we can see we have our top profile here and then we also have our side profile okay so all right so that's a little bit about section view again if you have any questions about uh, section view just uh, enter them in the comment section uh, wherever this video may be posted all right so now we have some geometry now do we need wireframe geometry in order to machine this part and the answer is no uh, we could work right off the surface edges for 2d uh, but sometimes we find it to be beneficial uh, maybe we want to drill a pilot hole in the center of this and then work out from there uh, you might want to have some wireframe to work with in order to create uh, that hole location right so what we can do is just create a line we can move over this edge here okay you'll see these construction lines come up what they do is uh, show different uh, references to the geometry whether it's horizontal or, or vertical or tangent right so we could uh, grab this point location here move over this line grab that point location there and then choose OK so now we have a line on center uh, from here we could just choose a point so we could put a point at the middle and use that to drive a drilling cycle uh, or we could draw an arc and be able to put an arc at this location you know, maybe adjust the size of the, the uh, hole we're making and then choose OK. All right, so now, you know, again, just working with the, the wireframe geometry, that could be helpful. Now, I would say in recent versions, they did add a midpoint snap to surfaces. OK, so in the past, you would only pick up endpoints. So if you tried to draw a line between here and here, you would really only get these two options of these uh, endpoints, right? Uh, but in the current versions of Bobcat, like version 36 that I'm working on, uh, it will show midpoints. So if I move over this edge, I can grab a midpoint, and then I can move over this other edge and grab a midpoint and be able to draw that center line. Okay, so uh, depending on the version of Bobcad you're running, you may not have access to this. And again, when you convert to wireframe, uh, all the systems will have uh, extract edges. So this will definitely be a go-to for you, regardless of which version you may be running. All right, so let's look at some next steps here. So let's go ahead and uh, bring the model back up. Just gonna hide these other layers. Now, <clears throat> You know, we, we could go through like the last video in, in measure, but at this point, we, we really just want to get a job going. Uh, we're going to zero in a, a known position, so maybe we're going to grab this corner here, and we got to decide whether we're going to just profile uh, or maybe drill and profile. So in this example, we're going to just profile because uh, that's our third topic today. So we'll go into the cam tree and we'll create a new job. So we'll right click on this, create new job. This is gonna be a milling job based on a three axis machine. And then we'll choose the stock wizard. Okay, we'll go ahead and select our model as our workpiece, And then we're gonna advance. Uh, from here, it's gonna pick up the min max of the model. Now, if we did wanna better represent, uh, represent uh, the stock let's say it's just this uh, L channel uh, we could use some of the other features here right so we could use wireframe now I don't 
I don't believe, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't believe this will, uh, maybe it will. That might be new. Let's uh, drive this along X. Yeah, it does look like that is working, so that's nice. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, we could just pick that edge there, and then uh, I believe that's a new feature. In the past, you needed to convert it to wireframe. Now we're able to just pick that face, and uh, we could adjust the length of it, right? So we could say, I think this is five, right? We could say it's five that way and five the other way. Uh, that's an okay workflow, but in this example, it's, it's less important to see the actual shape. So we're gonna just turn the solid back on. We'll go to the bounding. We're gonna calculate, and we'll let it just generate a bounding box for the part and that looks good. Now, the next thing we want to do is advance, and we want to set our zero position, okay? So by default, the zero will be the world coordinate system. Uh, you'll notice all these points come up on the screen. So what we want to do is grab this one over here. So we're gonna go to origin, and we're gonna just grab that point location, and that's gonna represent our work offset, or our, our zero position. Uh, from here, we're going to just choose OK, and now we have our job set up, okay? So we have our zero position. This is a, a critical location. This has to match what you set out at the machine. Uh, let's go ahead and go to a top view, and we want to load uh, a two-axis profile feature. So we're going to right-click on our machine setup. Uh, we're going to come down to mill two-axis, okay? Uh, from here, we're going to choose Select Geometry. All right, we're going to just left-click one time on this edge, and because of the new auto-chaining, you can see it goes all the way around. Now, most of the time when you're working on a part, you have a print or some other reference information for the, the height or the depth uh, of the part. Uh, in this example, or in general, if you're working off the solid, you can, you can enter the value if we know how deep it is, uh, but you can also just pick off the edge of the model uh, in order to set your depth, and then if you want to add a punch through, you could either do that within the wizard, uh, or you could add that here. So that's kind of up to you. You could say plus, you know, 100 thou or whatever, whatever amount you want to break through. Uh, you will notice there is a preview, so this, uh, I guess that's kind of like a, like a red color, right? Uh, this preview is showing us not only the profile that we selected, but more importantly, the depth that it's set to. So we can clearly see how deep it's going to, and that looks fine. Let's go ahead and choose OK. Now, we're in the two-axis wizard, so from here we can define a variety of different machining strategies. Okay, so right now by default we have a profile rough, and we have a profile finish. So in our example here, we're gonna to go to machining strategy. We're gonna remove the profile finish and we're gonna just use a profile rough. Okay, the difference between the profile finish and the profile rough has to do with patterns. So if we come over here to where it says patterns, you'll see the profile finish doesn't have any additional patterns. It just has a, a standard pattern and when you're in the profile rough, you can see you have contour ramping and you also have side roughing. So you can use profile rough for finishing, but in general, we rough cut and then we come back with a finish tool and finish cut. So for this particular material and job, uh, we don't need to do that. It's not a high tolerance, it's just a, a clearance hole here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the finish and we're just gonna use profile rough. Another way to consider it is profile rough gives you additional uh, patterns where profile finish doesn't. All right, we're gonna go ahead and choose next. Now the way this wizard is set up, you can navigate through the next previous, uh, or you can use the tree to jump ahead. So whatever you're more comfortable with. Again, we started with our geometry selection. Our feature has our clearances, where we start cutting and where we end cutting. Uh, there's also a profile extension, so if you have an open profile and you want it to extend further out or trim back, you can accomplish that with these functions. 
We have our machining strategy. This is where you can add operations. Think of operations like cycles that you would apply to that geometry. Uh, tabs here, this is if you're going to leave material behind in order to keep the part connected to the stock. Uh, posting, this is your work offset. Uh, some outputs as far as the code format. Some machines support uh, helical arc movements. Others uh, require just line movements, so you can make that adjustment here. Uh, so those are your, your feature level settings. Uh, when we get into the profile rough, we have our tool size. So here we can just type in, you know, what size tool that we want to use. All right, we have our speeds and feeds, so we can go ahead and adjust uh, our spindle speed and, and our cutting feed rates. Uh, you see that it is pre-populated. Uh, this is based off the material set up in the job. Uh, most of the time I'm going to override this and I'm going to type in the values that I want. Uh, but typically I'll do that after I have my toolpath set up, uh, unless it's just a, a standard value that, that I always use. Uh, from here we're going to get into the pattern. So I'm going to kind of focus on these, uh, these patterns here. So uh, we're going to start with the standard. Uh, down here we have our compensation. So we'll see we have system comp left. Uh, system comp and other systems would be called computer comp. And that's where the software looks at the tool size and will offset for half of it. Uh, machine comp, this is when you're using G41 or G42. Uh, there are some rules that go along with G41 and G42. Uh, and what this allows you to do is to adjust uh, your finish out of the machine. In this example, we're going to just turn it off. Uh, you will see a spring passes option now. Uh, in previous versions, you would kind of load multiple operations in order to uh, uh, achieve a, a spring pass. A spring pass is just running around the profile for a second or third time to remove any spring that might have been in the, the material or the tooling, uh, probably. Uh, so we could turn that on and off uh, if we wanted to add additional passes at uh, the finished shape. Uh, in this example, we're going to just turn it off. All right, so we're going to let the software offset for the cutter. We're going to do a standard profile. Uh, when we get in the parameters, this is where you're going to find your side allowance. This is how much material you're leaving on the wall. And then this is your bottom allowance if you're going to uh, leave any material on the floor. Uh, in this example, we're going to set that to zero. Okay. Your depth uh, parameters here, are you going to take it in one pass uh, or did you want to step down? Now, if you're going to step down and take it in multiple passes, you get some different options for defined depths, even depths, um, minimize retracts. That's kind of like keeping the tool down so it doesn't go up to clearance between each pass. But in this example, we're going to just start with a single depth. Uh, leads. Leads is how the tool enters the material. So if you're on like an outside shape, like shown in this picture here, you can have a a parallel lead so it starts off the part. Um, it adjusts how the tool is going to enter the material. So we're going to just start with vertical. Uh, corner types, uh, this is just different ways the tool acts or the tool path acts when it's uh, reached a corner. Uh, you, both ha you have both external and internal corner types. We're going to just leave the defaults. Machine sequence, this is when you're cutting uh, multiple profiles at a time, and you can use this to optimize the cutting order. Uh, just like the start location pattern, you could choose which side of the stock or which corner you're going to start from. Advanced feed rates, uh, this has to do with your the feeds that are posted. And there's a couple of different options here. Convert rapid to feed. This is if you have a, a dog leg rapid uh, machine, something like a Haas, you could override that with a forced fast uh, uh, G01 versus having it go into G00 and perform a dog leg. Uh, percentage feed rate in lead in and lead out so you can slow it down or speed it up as the tool enters or exits, generally slowing it down. Over here you got corner slow down. This is uh, you know, if you're cutting a faster uh, feed rate, you know, along a longer piece as it gets to the corner, 
Uh, this will stage and slow down the feed rate uh, for the corner and then it's going to speed back up. A lot of times uh, machines handle this with acceleration and deceleration. Uh, for those that for those machines that don't have that option or, or it doesn't uh, wasn't purchased, you can use this to stage down your feed rate uh, so it doesn't blow out your corners. All right. Uh, this here apply to links. Um, uh, this I believe these two are connected, so we're going to just turn that off for now. The last one here is called MDI, and uh, MDI uh, manual data input. What this allows you to do is uh, insert blocks of code before, after, uh, before the tool change, after the tool change, after the operation, or you can even pick custom locations as well. This is a little more advanced feature. Uh, if you've run a classic version of Bobcad, this would be more like the macro menu, uh, kind of on steroids. Uh, something that's in the mill turn or has been in the mill turn software for the last few years and uh, it's made it over into the milling software. So we're not going to get into that in this example, but if you'd like to learn more about MDI, make sure to comment in the video below. All right, so we have some settings. The last thing we're going to do is just hit compute and we'll get some kind of result on the, on the screen, right? So I'm going to go back to a top view so I can view what's going on. Now, the blue is representing the stock, and I don't always want to look at the stock, so I can just come over to this eyeball here and hide the stock. Uh, the green is representing the tool path. So this is where the tool is going to go. And uh, if we press and hold our center mouse wheel, we can get into a rotate. Uh, this purple line is where it's coming down or the start position uh, and then where it comes out as the exit position. So one of the questions often people have, let's go ahead and uh, turn the visibility of that off and just go to the uh, wireframe view. Uh, one of the questions users often have is how to adjust the start position, you know, where the tool is starting from, how do we control that, and then also which direction it's cutting in. So if we go into the tree here on our feature, if we uh, uh, highlight the feature by clicking on it, it's going to preview our selection and it will also preview the depth like we talked about before. If we go to the geometry, if we click on the geometry or put focus on the geometry, it will, uh, I, you know, I believe I used the solid here, so it will uh, preview what geometry was used in the selection. I guess if you hover over the model, then it goes away. So keep that in mind, but if you click on it, you'll be able to see that selection. Uh, below that, we have our default chain start point. So if we highlight on that, you'll notice that an arrow will come up. Let's go ahead and turn the solid off. An arrow will come up, and this arrow is indicating uh, where the lead-in position is, but it's also indicating what direction we're cutting. So uh, inside shapes, we generally want to go counterclockwise, and outside shapes are clockwise. So if we needed to change the direction of this, we can right-click on our chain start point and choose left-click on modify, and then we can click on different positions of the profile, and it will change uh, the start position and then if we want to change the direction we just click on the arrow itself and it will change the direction. Now depending on where this is and what you're cutting you may want to adjust where this lead-in position is and if you're not able to pick up a, a location you want right like you have 0, 45, 90, start, middle, end uh, you can break the geometry in another CAD feature uh, in order to change for a custom location. But in our example, this is fine. We're actually going to move it over here. We're cutting the direction we want to cut in. We're going to just go ahead and choose OK. Now, I changed the location, but you notice that it didn't auto-update. So if you change your selection or change your start point, you'll need to recompute. So we'll go to that profile operation, we'll right click and then left click on compute toolpath and then that will update uh, for the changes you made to your selection or your feature settings.
okay? Now, another thing, so we have it just coming down and we have it going around, okay? That is what a standard profile pattern does. Let's go back and change to the next pattern. So we'll come back over here, we'll go to pattern. This one's called contour ramping. So contour ramping is helical milling. It's gonna ramp down as it goes. Uh, I use this quite often in a variety of different operations. Uh, so you got standard is gonna follow around. Contour ramping is gonna ramp down as it goes. When you change this to contour ramping, uh, you're gonna get a depth of cut over here on your parameters. So this is how much the ramp is gonna be. So if we make this a steep number or a large number, it's gonna ramp very aggressively. If we make it a small number, uh, it's gonna ramp less aggressive. So you can see how it's ramping down as it goes, right? So it ramps down all the way to the bottom and then it comes back out. Now, if we make this a, a greater number, let's go ahead and come back to here and we'll make it the 0.5 that it was defaulted to you'll see that it comes very aggressively down and into the part, okay? Uh, if you wanna be a little more specific maybe with an angle, instead of using depth per pass, uh, you can set an angle and then define which angle you wanna ramp down at. So now you can see you can set an angle. All right, so again, it's gonna come down, ramp around, once it gets down to the bottom, it'll come back out. Uh, at this point, we don't have any leads, so it will be starting and finishing right on the wall, all right? Now, the next pattern we wanna look at, so we'll come back to patterns, we look at side roughing. So what side roughing allows you to do is take multiple passes in X and Y. So you could say there's X amount of material you wanna remove, and then you can say how many passes you wanna remove that in, We'll go ahead and recompute, and you'll see we kind of get a, a center pass and then we get another pass, okay? So this allows you, as I would say, to walk into the profile, all right? So for our example, we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna just go back to the standard profile. This is the most common uh, profile strategy you'll use, and then we'll go ahead and hit compute. Now, even though this hole is a clearance hole, it, it really doesn't hold the high tolerance. Uh, a lot of times we don't wanna plunge and exit right on the wall, uh, depending on the material you're working in, you know? Uh, but in this example, we wanna move this to a different position. So how do you adjust how the, where, well, we, we define where it leads in, we, we define what direction it cuts in, we went through a couple of patterns that you could use to adjust how it cuts. Now we're, we want to control the lead, the lead in and the lead out. So we'll get back into the feature and we'll go to the leads tab. And from here you have lead in options. So vertical, parallel, right angle, circular, blended, point, right? These are all your different ways in which you can lead in. Uh, I'm gonna go to, uh, let's go to point, and you'll notice that there's this lead from center, and uh, this is a great feature. You know, uh, it allows you to, like if it was just a circle, it would start in the center and exit in from the center, so you don't have to worry about uh, clearance issues, especially when you're dealing with tighter holes. Uh, if it's a irregular, let's say, or irregular shape, it will, approximate or do some math to find the center and then lead in and out from there. So we're gonna use this option and then we're gonna go ahead and hit compute. And now you can see the tool will start in the center, come around, okay? And then it's gonna come back to the center, okay? So that's the preferred option in this example. Now, sometimes we wanna start and finish past. We wanna go past where we lead in from. And that's what that overlap option is for. If we come back over to here to this overlap option, we can give it an amount and recompute, and you'll see it will cut past that position and then come back. All right, let's go ahead and edit that. Let's go back to leads. Let's set this to zero and we'll hit compute. All right, so we did that on this side of the part, but what about on this side of the part? 
Well, your toolpath is based off your selection, okay? In our selection, we only have, uh, let's see, I made it off the solid. We only have that one edge selected there, okay? So if we want to cut this, this slot here as well, we need to add that to our selection, okay? So we can come over here and choose geometry, choose reselect. We're going to left click on this edge one time. And now you'll notice there's two profile chains in here. We have one here and one here. Now for me, I moved this uh, lead position over to this corner. So I want to do the same thing on this side. So it's leading in from the same location. So I just left click over here and you'll see that it's leading in from the same location now. We'll go ahead and choose OK. And then we're going to right click on the operation and choose compute. So we have a lead in and cut around over here, rapids over, leads in and cuts around over there. Now, let's say that we do want to, we don't want to ramp, but we do want to step down. We can double click to edit our profile feature. We can go to our parameters here and then we can add multiple steps. So this allows us to define how much we're going to step down. Right now it's it's set to uh, two passes. So let's go ahead and recompute. And we can see the toolpath on the screen, but we can't really, like we see an arrow going down, so we know it starts there. And then over here we see an arrow coming up, so we know it exits there. But we're not able to, to fully see what's happening as it goes, right? Not, not just by the preview of the toolpath here, okay? so. What we want to do is backplot it. Backplot allows you to, to visualize where the toolpath is going. So we're going to right click over here. We're going to choose backplot. And then now this will display the tool and the holder. Okay, so in the more current versions of Bobcad, you can turn off the display of the holder and the arbor. So you can just look at the flute and the shank. You can change the render mode. So whether it's a wireframe view, transparent, or solid. And uh, that just helps for your viewing pleasure, okay? So from here, we're gonna click through, and every time we step through, this is actually a line of code or a line of the toolpath. You'll notice you have some uh, reference data over here, so you can kind of see what's happening. You have tool orientation data. This is great as you get up into more uh, complex uh, four or five axis routines. And then we also have some more detailed information, you know? Uh, what type of feed rate it is, start point, end point, uh, start direction, uh, end point. So this information is just useful uh, if you're trying to debug uh, uh, different scenarios that you might be running into. So a lot of times more information is better than less. And uh, in this case, you can use this information about the toolpath to help understand what's happening. So again, we're gonna just click through one at a time. And you see it goes all the way around, okay? And then it goes all the way around. Comes up, comes over, steps down, goes all the way around, steps down, goes all the way around, okay? So you can see how it works its way from this side to that side, all right? Now, if this is all we wanna do, we visualized it, we edited our settings, you know, the last step that you want to do is post your program. So you can come up here to this small uh, control panel looking icon and choose post, or you can come over here and choose post. And when you post it, it's going to write the code and you'll get a preview over here in this window. All right, so I can move this window up or down. And then this is going to show me what's going on in the program. So we can see the code and be able to verify the format, uh, assure that we're using the right post processor, you know, and again, this is our, our posted program. Now, because I just chose post, it just previews in this window here. Uh, you can copy out of here, so you can select this, right? Right click, uh, let me see, I guess you gotta do a control C. So you can select this and do a control C and control V and paste that code into a different editor. 
again, a new feature of the software in the recent versions. Okay, so if you're upgrading from an older version of Bobcat, I think you'll find that to be quite helpful. But yeah, those are the main topics that I wanted to cover today. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, just post in the comments section or wherever this video may be posted. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you.